Pan-Africanism is not just an ideology. It's a lived experience. It's a lived experience by our ancestors, by our forefathers, by our current heads of states, and by us, the African people of this generation. Let's hear first what my Pan-African brother, Brian Kagaro, said in AU Summit, and we will come back. There are five modes of narrative. First mode is action. That's what I think the chairperson of the African Union is saying, that people will not believe what we say until they see us act according to our beliefs. Pan-Africanism is not a theory. It's the lived solidarity that made the Ethiopians give Nelson Mandela a passport that made Senegalese civil servants contribute one dollar each every month for the liberation of South Africa, that made Zambia take care of us as Zimbabweans and South Africans as we fought for our liberation, that made Uganda take care of the comrades that now run this country. If Pan-Africanism has no active solidarity action, no active affirmative action, the words are meaningless because even the devil can quote scripture. Right. Pan-Africanism is a lived experience. Our ancestors have lived it. Our forefathers who established the African Union has lived it. Our current heads of states are living it. And also by us, the African people of this generation, we are witnessing that firsthand. Now, why do I say this? Let me explain one by one. Why do I say that Pan-Africanism is a lived experience by our ancestors? Because Pan-Africanism is that experience of our brothers and sisters in Haiti who fought against the abolishment of slavery and also the French colony from 1791 to 1803 which eventually led to the abolishment of slavery throughout the world. Pan-Africanism is also a lived experience by Ethiopians who fought against the European colonization in Africa. The Battle of Adwa, the victory of the Battle of Adwa in 1896. That's Pan-Africanism, which eventually led to the fight against colonization throughout the continent and Africans globally. Now, number two, why do I say that Pan-Africanism is a lived experience by our forefathers? Because it is that commitment of our leaders at that time, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Emperor Haile Selassie, and more other African leaders who established the Organization of African Unity, now called the African Union which was really committed to, to fight the, for freedom of African countries throughout the continent. Pan-Africanism is also at that time when Ethiopia invited uh, the great Madiba or as we know him as Nelson Mandela, providing him a passport and in order to be able to continue to fight against apartheid. Number three, why do I say that Pan-Africanism is a lived experience by uh, our current heads of states. For example, a very fresh memory. Ethiopia just had a war from 2020 November to 2022. Now, that during that war, it was a war in the northern part of the country, uh, the Ethiopian federal government and the TPLF. But the TPLF was sponsored by the US and its Western allies. So the prime minister, Abiy Ahmed, who mobilized Ethiopians inside and outside and also the African countries in order to defend uh, the sovereignty of the country and Africans rallying behind that idea to defend Ethiopia against uh, the pressure of or the, the twisted uh, colonization of the Western countries. That is, that's Pan-Africanism. As the Prime Minister said during the 35th uh, ordinary session of the AU Summit in, uh, in, in February 2022, if it was not our brothers and sisters in Africa, we would not have been uh, a nation right now because he know it was a, re a, re a reality. It was a pressure. Let's hear actually what he's saying and we will come back. 
I wish to take this opportunity to thank you all for your support, solidarity, and understanding as we underwent these trying times. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest lesson that Ethiopia has learned over the past year is that without the solidarity of our African brothers and sisters, our existence as a nation would have been at great risk. This affirms the wisdom of our forefathers and foremothers in their dream of Pan-Africanism. The old saying is true, united we stand, divided we fall. Today, we stand proud and tall as Africans in the shadow of those who struggled to liberate and unite Africa. As you have heard, it was really a, a, a real pressure by the Western country to tear apart the only uncolonized uh, country in the continent. But of course, uh, our African brothers and sisters on media and others intellectuals who rallied behind Ethiopia to defend the sovereignty of Ethiopia because it was an African war that was fought. That is Pan-Africanism. Another example why I say Pan-Africanism is a lived experience by our current heads of states is that when the African Union took the matter what's happening in its own territory, for example, when it championed the African solution to African problems to end the war in Ethiopia led by Africans, that's Pan-Africanism. Now, number four, why do I say that Pan-Africanism is it's a lived experience by us, by African people? Look at Eritrea, look at Zimbabwe. They have been facing for more than two decades sanctions put up by the so-called international organizations, the West and particularly the US. But these people, regardless of that, have stood strong and tall together with their governments. That is Pan-Africanism, the resilience of Eritreans and Zimbabweans in any other African countries that is going through actually the same challenge. So my dear brothers and sisters, Pan-Africanism is a lived experience. It's not just an ideology, it's beyond that. Let me hear in the comment section what do you think of Pan-Africanism at this time. Until next time, bye-bye.